Welcome back to the Webbing O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. Manchester United versus Burnley in the EFL Cup. Plenty of talking points in this one in the team selection. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Tony, difficult one this for what he's going to go with in the starting 11, but try and give us an overview of what you think on this. I think what it is, this starting 11, Manchester United have got to pick from. I think they're under big pressure. Uh, Burnley are going to come at us. Solid side. They want back in the Premier League. Nine wins out of ten. Mm. Well, in the last all competitive games they've played. And I think what it is, when you look at the uh, the winter camp, what he took away, very hard to introduce players. Looks like we're going to have a, a mixture of youngsters, possible squad players, and one or two first-teamers. It doesn't bode well. Having a look at the last two games where uh, yeah. we was there away in the winter training camp, bringing them against the solid side because that's what this Burnley side is. Tough, resilient. The manager, ex-City, he's coming to Old Trafford. He's already commenting about it. I think United are up <coughs> against it. But I do believe that if Ten Hag put Scott McTominay as centre-half, we might have a chance. How's that? So that's all we need to do then, Eric Ten Hag. Put Scott McTominay at centre-back. Games won. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult than that, Tony. Obviously, you mentioned Vincent Company there. There's going to be nothing better for him to come to Old Trafford and come away with the win. I think there's roughly 6,000 Burnley fans turning up at yeah, Old Trafford that's right. for this one. So they're going to be right behind the team. Doing well will. in the championship as well. Sitting pretty at the top of the league, beating Middlesbrough at the weekend as yeah. well, 3-1. So it's a good uh, bounce for them. But, you know, you look at that winter uh, camp that we did take to Spain. You know, Zidane Iqbal, Charlie Savage. McNeil as well. Do you expect them to be in and around that starting eleven, or at least on yeah. the bench for this one, Sona? No, I expect them to be in and in and around without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, my problem with this game is is giving Wan Bissaka, Williams, and Donny Van der Beek a chance. Uh, I think really, to be honest, them three shouldn't be in the team. They should be looking to either being sold in January mm. uh, or loaned out. And the youngsters should be brought in. That's why when you mention Savage and players like that, I do believe this is the time to give them kids the chance against a tough, tough Burnley yeah. side looking to get back straight away in the Premier League. And that's why I say Scott McTominay, centre-half yeah. with, uh, what's his name? Lindelof. Lindelof. Because there is no other centre-halves. We've got to give them a chance, yeah. these youngsters, right, to play football with a solid defence. Now, well, it's, a great, it's a great t test as well, though, for him, like you said, Tony. Th this is going to be a proper team that turn up here in Burnley, a physical team. I don't think it's a, the same kind of play what we've seen under Sean, Sean Dyche. You know, Vincent Company is getting them to play football as well. So it's going to be a massive test for a lot of these youngsters. Yeah. You know, you could have Garnaccio. I think he's a certain to start on the left-hand side. But in that midfield area, you know, does Ericsson come back in? You know, I think they got eliminated, didn't they, in the group stage, Denmark. So, yeah. is, is he ready to play Tyrell Molassi? Who you're just going to lose to? Molassi, Molassi. He didn't play a minute in the World Cup, know, so but he'll be playing. He should be fresh there yeah. to play at left back. But again, in that midfield area, do you go with Zidane Iqbal, drop McTominay to centre half? It looks You've a little bit give... weak though in that middle there, doesn't it, Tony? With Ericsson and Iqbal though, this against where, a tough team. This is where the kids could shine. You have to have a solid back four to give the game a chance. Because if the game is taken away from you earlier on, because the back four, we've seen it in that winter break where they were just all over the place for the first 20 minutes that yeah. first game. It didn't work well. We have to start strong and you've got to have that back four. Mm. So I do believe having Scott McTominay there will give us a chance. We'll give them youngsters who are in the team a chance to play football. Because once yeah. it's took away from you, with a mismatch of a team, youngsters, yeah. squad players, First teamers, it ain't gonna go well. Yeah. I, that's how I see it. So, so I fear for the youngsters, unless we have a solid back four. De Gea in goal, that should cement it. I think. Yeah, I just, I just think it worries me. You know, I think we'd need Scott McTominay in that middle, that midfield. To be honest with you, if you've got just Ericsson in there and Zidane Ball, I think the physicality of Burnley, you know, the way they are playing football, you know. Big, big confidence throughout their team. I think our midfield would get overrun, to be honest. And I just think we need that steel in there, like we do see with Casemiro, but obviously he's not going to be playing. But I just think Scott McTominay would be, you know, great in that midfield there to just sit there and try and sweep everything up, but just try and start them runs off through midfield as well. But we know we can do, so... 
It's uh, about formation. Uh, yeah, so, do, yeah, do, it's about do, getting the balance right as well. Get, as a team, well, that's it? what I'm saying. Does he play four in midfield? Mm. Does he play four four two? Does he play a five four one? Yeah. You know what I mean? That that you know these kids, this team yeah. has to have a chance of playing football. Yeah. And you've got to get older the ball. Yeah. We're not going to win by a load of goals if we put out two, three attackers. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I can't see it. Do you see Wan Bissaka starting at right back ahead of Williams? And obviously we're going with Malassia at left back. So is it a toss up of a coin between them two, or do you think Wan Bissaka would start? Uh, to be honest with you, I I don't think any of them will start. I think it'll uh, start with somebody else. I think this yeah. is the sign. I do honest. I do think this is the sign of. Wan Bissaka, Williams, and Donny Van der Beek out of the door. There is no point playing them in this game, mm. right? And letting kids sit on the bench. No point whatsoever. That's how I see it. I'll be very disappointed if them three players play, especially if all the signs are that they're going, whether they go in January or the summer. Yeah. These kids need a chance, yeah. okay? But they also need a chance to play football. Uh, so let's give it them. <clears throat> and let's get the people who we see who has not been there out. Of, just get out of the team and give these youngsters a chance. This is what it's about, this competition. We're playing a strong side. Do we expect United to win? No, I don't. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they do. Yeah. Right. And there's it's an nothing... informed Burnley side, and it's on it. Yeah. And it's going to be tough for a lot of these youngsters who are going to be put in there without any of, like, let's say, the experienced heads in there. You know, if you've got Casemiro in there, let's say, you know, who, who can help the youngsters out in game in, in game management. But we've not really got anyone like that right. that I see starting in this game. So I see it this way. The reason why I pick on them three players to get them out is they have no incentive to go forward. Right? You mean at Manchester United? At Manchester United. Right, okay. <laughs> That's why I want three youngsters to replace them. Yeah. That's what I'm meaning. They have no incentive when every man in his dog knows them three are not long-term Manchester United players. So let's put three players in who will battle yeah. and fight for United and give us a chance to win the game. No, That's how I look at I, it. I, I, no, I totally get what you're saying there. That you know one thing with the youngsters that come we, on we, United, yeah. That even though we did see in the, you know the Spanish camp in them two games, even though there were two defeats, they give it everything. The youngsters at Old Trafford, there we've not had any football there for, from United really at Old Trafford for over a month, have we? A month and a half or so, and the crowd's going to be right up for it. We're going to be up for it, and everyone's just going to get behind them. So as long as everyone puts in a shift, that's, that's all what you can. That's all you can hope for. Do you know what I mean? That's all you can ask for. So that's all that's you can it. ask for. But playing players what want to put in a shift. Yeah. Not what want to go or are going. So that's how I look at it. Come on, now talking to you, I'm buzzing for it. And I actually think 2-1 United. That's that's uh, that's made me a little bit happy there, Tony. You're yeah. talking to me. Fight, you... fight, fight. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But um, talking to players out the door, you know, there's a lot of, well, it's not a lot of rumours, but it's well known that there's a few players out of contract. You've got Rashford, De Gea, yeah. Luke Shaw, Delow. We're all expecting them contracts to be triggered. Well, the one-year option to be triggered. Yeah. But there's a lot of news about De Gea. Is he staying? Is he going? He'll be staying. I, I think so as well. But do you think he'll be staying past that one-year option? Do you think he'll be getting a new deal, though, Tony, and a new and improved deal? I, I think, no. I think when you look at the club as a whole, owners selling, buying, is it, are they staying? New owners coming in. The manager has only been there six months. You know, this is the time just to give him the extended contract, ignite it, and away you go. And let's see what happens if new owners come in mm. and let's see what happens in the summer because yeah. then Ten Hag will have been able to assess it. So all these contracts where people have got one year, they'll all be like pressed in the uh, January, the window. Marcus Rashford did come out on a tweet. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, basically saying that a lot of the rumours around his contracts aren't true kind of thing. And, you know, you shouldn't believe everything that you hear in the media. Ten Hag did come out the other week and basically said, didn't he, that there's a contract offer there. It's up to Ma Marcus Rashford to basically sign it. We discussed it in a video, if you want to check it out on our playlist. But what, what do you think there? Because he was also saying, Rashford, that he's hopeful that we'll get top four. What, what was your automatic feeling towards that, if you have seen it? But with a smile on your face, I know you have seen it, so let me know and everyone else out there what you think of that. I've seen his tweet, <laughs> and I've seen Marcus Rashford for quite a while now on his social media and all that, uh, and he talks about Manchester United. 
his ambition with Manchester United's ambition this year is to get in the top four. Is that no, realistic though? No, 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 no. Ambition. No, no. Manchester United's ambition and Marcus Rashford's ambition. Manchester United fans' ambition. And United fans' ambitions shouldn't be about getting in the top four. Do you know what it should be about? Competing and winning things. Not getting in the top four. So Marcus Rashford is Marcus Rashford. You know, like his brother talks to Paris Saint-Germain and there's a contract to be signed and he hasn't signed it. And then he tries to like mug us off with a tweet. Mm. And I did see it, right? And he had a lot more to say than what I've just said now, right? But I don't want to offend any children out there, so I'll keep me uh, views. Do you expect United to get top four though this season? Do I expect United to get top four? No, I don't. So he's being realistic then, isn't he? Rashford, just saying that he's hopeful of getting top four. Is he, is he not just saying what most of us fans maybe think at this time? No, most fans want us to get in the top four. Yeah. Think we'll get there. Uh, this is my opinion. I don't think we'll get there for various reasons. And I think this squad is too thin. Yeah. Right. And it'll fade at the end. And I think it'll just miss out. Yeah. Uh, miss out. That's what I think. Uh, but the thing is, it should be competing for other trophies. Uh, but Marcus Rashford doesn't seem to think they're important and that the fans, what the fans want. Uh, he's got a contract, like you said. He's not signed it. Yeah. Maybe talking about that a bit more bluntly and truthfully might help us all out. I think the only way we get top four or make that fourth spot, third spot, however you see it out there, let me know what you think. But we need a striker in January. We need someone who's just going to come in in January to hit the ground running and start scoring goals on a regular basis. And that's going to be a very, very difficult to find, in my opinion. But let us know what you think on that, the striker options going forward for the rest of the season. Anything else to add on uh, today's video, Tony? No, no. But the more I think about Marcus Rashford, the, the more depressed I get. But So I, I'd like to end it there. Well, hopefully Marcus Rashford can hit the ground running when he comes back into the team, start scoring his goals because someone's, so. someone's got to grab this team by the scruff of the neck and start scoring goals yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. And that includes Anthony Martial as well. Yeah. But if they don't perform, Tony, hopefully it gives a chance to the youngsters as well to come in. But a lot of pressure there on young shoulders if that was to happen. Um, Going to stop waffling on now. I think yeah. we've done everything we need to on today's yeah. video. Obviously, back after the Burnley game, straight after the match reaction, we've got Tony with his. We've got Webby back as well with his match reaction. Yep. So make sure you tune in for them. Get the notifications on. If you have enjoyed today's video, please smash a like on it. Supports the channel. And we much appreciate everyone out there who watches our videos. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.